Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ. And this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Kelly Ma, and she's going to be making an incredible, delicious recipe that is currently available as one of the over 2,000 recipes in the Vegan Health Bundle. Please welcome her to the show. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And yeah, I'm also really grateful to be in the bundle. It's on until Sunday. You guys have to get it, the link in the description. Um, my plant or my smoothie book is in there. And I'll give you a just like a quick story on this book. This is a super intentional book that I created. I was actually a professional recipe creator for many years for vegan food. And I was actually hired by a hospital in California to create a smoothie book. And I it actually like was really deep for me because I smoothies was what actually healed <laughs> my eating disorder back when I was 18. And uh, my mom had like a smoothie book on her on her table. And I was like the lowest point of my life. And I picked it up and I was 18. It was like the 90s guys. So the smoothie book was like tomatoes, garlic, onions, blended, and stuff like that. And uh, I started making smoothies. I was mostly focusing on the fruit ones. And I felt so much better. And ever since then, I'm now 38. I've had a smoothie minimum every day. Um, I became vegan in 2015. That's when I started recipe creating. And then when that hospital asked me, hey, can you make, make a smoothie book? And I thought in my mind, like, I need to make that smoothie book. So I made theirs and then I made my own and it's super intentional guys with like over 20 years of experience. I've read like every book on the benefits of every food you can imagine. It's my absolute passion. So I'm so excited to offer that in the bundle. Um, there's 170 recipes and today we're going to be making one of the smoothies, the hibiscus mango. And the reason why I love that one is I'm going to show you guys because in the book, we're stepping a little bit out. Like there's some really easy, like everyday smoothies, but there's some that make you step out a little bit out of your comfort zone, but in the best way so that you get like a variety of nutrients. So for example, like this hibiscus mango one we're gonna do, I reduced the amount of like free plant milk and I introduced an ingredient and it's a green, but it doesn't change the color of your smoothies and it adds an insanely creaminess to it. So I want to introduce that to, with, with you guys. So let's make the smoothie. So we'll start with two bananas. So just get your blender. And you want to have a high speed blender to make your smoothie. I mean, I was doing my mom's 18 year old Oster blender back in the day. So I can't say you need a high speed and that changed my life. So the two bananas and I cry every time because it's it seriously means so much that I've come this, this far two mangoes and just like any fresh mangoes are frozen and this is the ingredient you guys I have this a lot in the book it is um peeled zucchini so if you add just like a peeled zucchini in your smoothies it adds like a bulky creaminess so you can like reduce the amount of plant milk you can reduce the amount of nuts and it's like so many different benefits so we'll put that in there you know, once I was out of plant milk and I actually made zucchini milk in my nutra milk. So I know that zucchinis really are creamy. They, I, I make a soup every day that's potato and zucchini and they're just so great. It's like a magical ingredient. I love that you make zucchini milk. I've never even heard of that, but yeah, like that is it. So now I'll, I'll explain this ingredient as well with you guys. This is hibiscus flour. So what, you, what I did was, it's really big in Mexico, but I've also been able to get it in Canada, the U.S. as well. Just dried hibiscus flowers that people make as a tea. But I actually, just to keep it raw, I just soak them for minimum three hours. And the water is like, it honestly tastes like it's kind of like wine. And it gives you that pick-me-up that wine does without the alcohol. So we're going to put that in as well. So a cup of hibiscus water. And this, this is all in the book, in the bundle, in my book. So I'll put that in. And it also changes the color, makes it beautiful. Then we put two dates in there, medjool, nice, big, juicy date. And then just one cup of, I just did like almond milk or anything else that you'd like. 
So now we will blend. Uh, are you are you one hundred percent raw, Kelly? Mm, she didn't hear me. And that is it, guys, for the smoothie. And now we will just take a taste test before we get to our next one that I wanted to show you. But hibiscus, I have to say, it's super high in antioxidants, really anti-aging. It gives you a lot of energy. It's a bright red. So it's like I said, it's like wine. It's so it's like, such it's a cold. it's such a pretty color. Are you a hundred percent raw person? No, I'm high raw. High raw, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So right. we eat our big vegan dinners, um, cooked, big cooked vegan dinners. And then I try to go mostly raw throughout the day. That's great. Got a oh. nice comment uh, from Mark in the chat. I bought the bundle last night. I've been going through everything and I love everything. Thank you very much, Mark. Marley loves hibiscus flour, makes a mull tea with them and other ingredients. It makes an incredible mocktail. Yum. Yeah. And the good thing about hibiscus too, with the mango and the smoothie, is it's like, Hibiscus is super tart, but then balanced with the mango and the zucchini and bananas, it's like, it's just so, it's bursting. It's good. Um, so yeah, that is that is how easy that smoothie is. And like I said, the only difference is we soak our hibiscus for a few hours. And that's kind of the difference in ingredients from like a plain smoothie to like a little bit more. And now my next recipe is my most requested. So like I said, I've been recipe creating for bloggers and things like that since 2015. And this has been my most requested recipe to date. Like whenever I make it for people, they're always like, I need this. Like everyone wants this. Everyone wants me to make these. They're so simple. So I'm like, it's kind of funny. Like we try to go like really fancy sometimes, but it's mostly the simple stuff that everybody wants. So this is called the black sesame dessert ball. And black sesame, if you've had it before, it's like a super nutty taste. It's like a really like, kind of like, yeah, it's like a nutty full body taste. It's hard to explain, but that mixed with the dessert is like nothing else. It's like salty and sweet. So these are super easy and highly recommended to make. So I'll show you here. So we did a quarter cup of rolled oats and a quarter cup of hemp seeds. So just throw it in a food processor. You could use your blender if you had to. I'm sure that would work. You would just have to, you know, work it a little bit more. Uh, we did two tablespoons of either maple syrup or agave. I eye it like you do it. This is foolproof. Uh, a third of a cup of black sesame seeds. So I ground these up in the blender. You don't, you honestly don't even have to for this recipe. I've been in like brushes and I just throw it in, but it's nice to have them really incorporated. So you just pulverize them in the blender and then measure. And black sesame boosts brain function, supports brain health, anti-aging as well. Super high in calcium. It's like a bone builder. And in old ancient Chinese culture, they said that if you consume a lot of black sesame, you have less gray hair, like it prevents gray hairs. I don't know. I do consume a lot of black sesame though, and I'm almost 40, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, and then we've got a tablespoon of tahini. So tahini is like a white sesame butter, basically. It's also very magical, super high calcium as well. And so are dates, and dates are in this too. So super good for you, and my kids devour them, so it's a hit. Um, how, how old are your kids? A six-year-old and a four-year-old. Wow, and were they raised on a plant-based diet? Yes, they were born vegan, yeah, 100%. That's They've cool. never had any animal product, so, and they, it was funny, I was raw with, uh, when I was pregnant with my son, I was raw, and now he really gravitates towards raw food. And then my daughter, I was like, all I wanted was like ramen noodles and like homemade black bean burgers and stuff. And that's like all she wants now. So it's really funny how that's. That's funny. Good. What you eat in your pregnancy, they like when they're kids. That's neat. Well, that's why it's important to eat healthy then during pregnancy. Yeah, exactly. So this is all it is, guys. So now we just. 
blend that up really quickly. So I also want to say like you want your dates to be like really thick and, and juicy, but not overly wet because you want them to, you know, have everything stick together. So if you look like it's it's like an energy ball consistency. Oh, and also what I was going to say is if you're salt free, you don't have to put salt in. But I find a pinch of salt in a dessert with dates and stuff like that is like it just takes it to the next level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now, now all we do is just roll them into um, balls. You can you can actually blend them quite a bit, so it's like an all black ball. I just did it pretty quick, so you can have different textures. Like some people like them really like all black, all incorporated, and then this is more of like you can see the oats a little bit more texture. So you can do whatever you want. Both are is the exact same taste. Both are amazing. And then all I'm doing is um, rolling it in white and black sesame seeds. So. Pretty. And then what I do is I put them in the freezer or the fridge just to firm up. And, um, and then they're just like ready to go. And like I said, these are really like surprisingly really good. <laughs> and I think it's because of like the salty and sweet component. Like it's not too much of either. Yep. Susanna says her teens, she has eight children, loves energy bites and keeps them in a jar in the fridge for them. Uh, Elsa is saying, do you have a smoothie book too? Uh, she missed the beginning of the show. Do I have a smoothie book? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is my smoothie book is the ultimate smoothie book and it's in the bundle. So that's the one. So it's 170 recipes. So in the book, it's not just smoothies, mostly smoothies, but there's smoothie bowls as well. And then there's um, plant milk in there. It's kind of like everything you need. And then I also talk about things like sea moss. So if you were ever interested in adding like sea moss to your smoothies, or you're like, what is sea moss? Like, what do I, how do I do this? It's all in there. I also talk about sourcing. So where to get the best ingredients in the US, Canada, and Mexico, because I have lived everywhere. <laughs> And the first thing I do when I get to a new place is I start sourcing. I'm like, where do I get my stuff? So I put a bunch of stuff in there. And then I also talk about, you know, you can like boost your smoothies with ashwagandha, um, sea moss, and then I can't remember the other one, but yeah, it's all in there. Just like adding stuff. So you can, you could like, there's a couple of smoothies in there with like one or three ingredients. And then there's some where you can like, you could like go to the moon with this book. So it depends on what level you're at or where you want to go with it. But I've had people that have never made smoothies before really enjoy my book because it takes them out of, you know, it actually shows them where they want to be with smoothies and like gives them kind of like that base. And then I've had, you know, raw vegans for 10, 15 years that are like, your smoothie book's amazing. I didn't even think about these like, components and stuff so I'm like yay there's a there's a chapter in there that uses herbs and flowers so that's where the hibiscus one is and I make like a London fog one there's also a eggnog smoothie so like things like that extra fun one too nice so people always love to know from every guest on chef aj live the infamous what I eat in a day question so I'd love to hear it from someone who is high raw so what I eat in a day is I'm still breastfeeding my daughter. So I try to eat a lot or at least answer my hunger as quick as possible. But basically in the morning, what I do is I for sure have a smoothie and I either like have a piece of avocado toast with my kids or just like a big smoothie and then some fruit. And um, for lunch, I'll have like, I'm actually like lately, I've been having Melissa's raw wraps and they are amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Or I would just have like, I'll make like raw tacos or, or just like kelp noodles or something like that. And then for dinner, we have like a big, like I'll make rice and like in Mexico, we'll make like rice, beans, 
lots of veggies. My kids really like cactus. So we have like fried cactus or veggies and then we make tacos. So we get like um, tortillas down the street, just make tacos. So at dinner, I just have like big meals. But then during the day, I personally try to eat like as raw as possible with like lots of fruit, smoothies and things like that. So I'm not hard on myself though. I'm not like like it has to be a certain way like if I go out for lunch with a friend I'll go out for lunch and I'll have a big meal with them and then later in the evening I might just have a smoothie so I keep it simple but like really potent so I'm incorporating a lot of superfoods into my diet and I do a lot of fruit and big meal and one big meal a day for sure yeah are your kids picky eaters or are they adventurous eaters I don't think, I don't feel that they're picky eaters because I like forever, they've just been eating my food and they're really good with eating mine. I've always made them like, you know, mac and cheese, but like I'll make the sauce out of like uh, carrots, um, potatoes, onions, and then I blend it with like some cashews and nutritional yeast. So they love that. So I try to make it, um, like I have a book on what I feed my family. So I try to make it just whole foods and I find that my kids gravitate towards that. Sometimes it's part like a birthday party and they eat chips or something at the party. They don't feel the greatest. And then it just makes them realize that they just want mom's food. But we've always been vegan. So they've never had any like animal products at all. So yeah, like it's, it's honestly just like a part of our life. But I wouldn't, I don't think that they're picky, but I have to say my daughter lately has like, wanted you know she's more of like she'll want like spring rolls and then my son would be fine with like a, a buddha bowl or something so yeah it's just about navigating and like being consistent and always just bringing the healthy meals and that's kind of like all they can eat because there's nothing else so. exactly exactly do um did you have time to look at the bundle and find other things that interested you maybe they're not the cooking courses or the recipes Yes, I've been on my Instagram, I've been making some meals from the bundle and I made the Broccoli Mums Indian Feast. I made like four dishes from there. I was, it was so good. You have to try it. It's, well, uh, I, I did try it. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned to you right before we logged on, Tammy Kramer, who's in the bundle, <laughs> gave me a feast that she'd made for one of her lives. So we're going to have dinner for a couple of days. So that is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, Melissa and Maris are always amazing. I'm I'm excited to make your peanut chew. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to make your peanut chews. And then, yeah, I've just been going down and making, I made a Lebanese dish from uh, Rachel Detroit. That was so good. The Super Simple series. And um, I want to make raw chef yins, jackfruit. Like I have, I love bundle time because I'm like, I'm making every single thing. But then what I love about the bundles too, because I, I was in another bundle previously and I've also purchased bundles. And every time I'm like, I just need inspiration. I start going through the bundles and I'm like, oh yeah, look at all the stuff I could make. I love it so much. It's my favorite. That's so cool. That is great. Do you have any favorite kitchen equipment you like to recommend to people? Um, I Well, I've been traveling with my vitamins and my food processor. So that is the minimum. I also travel with my um, my dehydrator, my Excalibur, but like that's a little bit extra. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a big thing. How do you travel with a dehydrator? I mean, you must be going by car, right? Yeah, well, through Mexico, we've been going by our truck, yes. So we okay. do, but it like, I bought it in Mexico. I sold mine in Canada. I used to have one, but we only have the four tray. But I I say minimum, like for your kitchen, if you just have a vitamin and a food processor, you are good to go. Also, a third, I would say, is like a um, like a rice or an Instant Pot is also, if you're not fully raw. An Instant Pot is amazing. Have you ever used an Instant Pot? You probably oh, have. Every single day. It's th That and the air right. are my two favorite appliances for sure. Yeah, I think the Instant Pot will like get you, like it makes your beans, it makes everything. And then me being high raw, like I don't, I I can go without a dehydrator if just to keep it simple. I just feel like if someone's high raw and they have babies, just focus on the vitamins, the food processor, and instant pot, and you're like pretty much good to go. Unless you want to be extra, you get the you get the Excalibur. 
with two little kids, do you ever have time to exercise or is your exercise just running, chasing them around? Yeah, I haven't exercised since I had babies, but running around is all we do. We have a pool in our backyard, so that's, we go swimming a lot, But and I chase them and, and things like that. But eventually, I want to get back to yoga, but I've honestly been in the kitchen and just raising them. I've been homeschooling them for six years, so I'm busy, like, just surviving. <laughs> Nice. Here's a, uh, we have Ross Chefian, who's been on the show many times, who also has an amazing food photography and styling course in the Bundle Europe early today. Yen, she said she made one of your recipes, the orange sage smoothie, and it was delicious. I love that about you. And she actually makes the contributors recipes. Yes. Love you. She's like my sister. We've, I've known her for a long time. She's amazing. She and her food is really good. And no one is like her. Like her stuff is like very unique. Yeah. And, and also uh, her food is just beautiful too. So uh, Z, Z, Zizi or in New York, Z-I-Z-I-N-Y-C says, thank you for the bundle and these great demos. Thank you so much for the acknowledgement and for watching and everything like that. Did your husband get on board with you in 2015 when you went vegan or plant-based? Uh, he was the originally the one who wanted to go vegan. So yeah, when we, he watched a documentary and it was Cowspiracy and I watched it with him and I had all these health problems. Like I'm telling you, I, cause when I first started smoothies when I was 18, then I started a lot, I was doing smoothies, but I was also eating a lot of meat. So I was doing the meat thing for quite a while. And then in, so like what 15 years later 10 years later we went vegan and we watched a cowspiracy and then we watched i think uh what the hell and he was like we're gonna go vegan and i was like i love cooking i love co i love used to love cooking meat and i was like well what am i gonna make and he's like i don't know we have to go vegan i can't eat meat anymore so he used to have a lot of health problems as well but we didn't we actually didn't do it for the health problems we just did it because it made the most sense and then I start. I just went to Pinterest. I'm like vegan, and it was like rice dishes, Chinese food, all these. Things. And I was like, okay, like you can still eat a lot of stuff. So then I started going that. Then I found um, uh, fully raw Christina. So I started making her stuff. And then all of a sudden, I, so I was doing both the raw and the cooked. And then all of a sudden, like my health problems completely went away. I had chronic IBS, chronic headaches. I had um, endometriosis. I had everything. I had really bad acne, um, anxiety, just everything. And literally within three months, everything went away. Um, Jermaine also, like he was sleeping, he was sleeping with a, a mask on at, at night, a CPAP machine. And then within a couple of weeks after going vegan, he didn't have to do that anymore. He's fully breathing uh, at night. So we just decided we will never go back. It is amazing. <laughs> so yes, well, it was him at first, and then I was like, I was on board after. So thank you, thank you for doing that and for raising vegan kids. And do you work with people individually? What, what do you do exactly? Yes, so I'm actually a coach for women. So what we do is I bring people from kind of like burnt out, tired moms that are trying to manage everything. And I bring them back. So what we do is we have so much fun. We start off on a vegan diet. So I just give them like really good, um, a really good plan to help them. And then I just bring them up in that way. So we start with the health. And then we also do a little sound healing and stuff online and just like calling in that abundance. So I re we really change their life, uh, focusing mostly on bringing up their energy and their health. So it's a beautiful program that I have and it's in my Instagram and then what I also and my um my website down below and then I what I also do is I make raw vegan cakes so I'm a raw vegan chef by trade or sorry raw vegan dessert chef by trade and um I make cakes so when we were living in Playa del Carmen I was making cakes for the community it's my business here in Medida I make cakes but I'm so busy with my coaching program that I'm making a little bit less but it is my absolute passion to like bring people, a lot of people aren't vegan when they try my cakes and they just can't believe like how healthy something so delicious can be. So yeah, it's been really fun that way. So then I also think I'm like, well, I'm a, 
I've made, I'm a smoothie connoisseur and I'm a dessert chef and I've made a smoothie book. So I think it's going to be good, hopefully. Wow. I went to raw culinary school and I think raw desserts are some of the prettiest. Where can we see your creations if we can of your raw cakes? Yeah, it's all on my Instagram. So I'm going to be okay. focusing even more on raw cakes in the few, in this year. So we're going to be going from smoothies now. Now we're going to go more into raw cakes online and you're going to see a lot more on my Instagram. But yeah, on my Instagram, it's all my, my photos and stuff of my cakes. Wow, that is so cool. If you guys have any questions from Kelly, please put them in the chat. And I've been posting a Kelly's unique link if you'd like to support her and get the bundle from her both in the chat and in the show notes. Is this the first time you've been in a bundle? No, this is my second time. I was in the plant-based bundle at uh, the end of 2022. Ah, nice. I love your bowls. Where'd you get them? Uh, you know what? They came with the home. We have this beautiful home in Medida that's fully furnished, and it came with the most beautiful stuff. The owner is a foodie. You can tell. like She has the most beautiful kitchen. I fell in love with everything here. I'm like... Just got to move in. So yeah, we are, we're traveling. So we put everything in a trailer in Canada and we just, we are living out of suitcases since 2019 and I've been running a culinary business ever since. So <laughs> that's wonderful. Do you, are your kids old enough to know that they're vegan or what that means? Yes. Um, my, they're now, we just started school uh, this year, like just in January for the first time. And actually, there's seven other vegan families in the school, which is so crazy to me. I've never really known that many vegan families in real life. So that was really supportive. But my kids definitely know the only like the only hard thing is going to birthday parties and having the cake come out and they can't eat it, which is one of my biggest things of my cake business is why I decided to do that is because I like to bring the cakes for the vegan kids, especially because it's like the saddest thing that my kids can't eat the birthday cake. But yes, they do know um, they're really like into the animal advocacy. Like they they understand why we're not vegan and they absolutely love it. Like they feel like they're doing so much whenever we talk about it. And I show them people like me, my Delgado for my son. And he's like, he's so cool. And he's vegan. So it's like they think it's awesome and they're so little. So it's just like they're just so used to it. But yes, they definitely know they're vegan. They always ask if things are vegan. And yeah, they get it. That's amazing that there's that many vegan families, especially, you know, in Mexico, you know? Yeah, we were really surprised. Traveling, we haven't met that, like that many vegans. I mean, you do, but it's, you, you, you know, it's like it's one here and there. But yeah, it's a really big community of vegans in Medida. So I'm very happy in here. What, what part of Mexico is that? Like name some cities I might be more familiar with where, where you are. Oh, it's, yeah, it's two hours away from Playa del Carmen. So it's in the Yucatan. Uh, it's right underneath, pretty, like, kitty corner to Florida, I would say. Um, so it's right, on, like, Cancun is a few hours from us, which is where we were living before. So, it's like, Wait, three you're, hours from you're near. You're near, did you say Florida? Like, underneath, Yeah. I didn't have an idea Mexico went all that way. Because I, I mean, when I lived in Southern California, I was like a two hour drive from Mexico, you know? Yeah, yeah, it goes pretty far. Like it's an only an hour flight from Miami to Playa del Carmen. So it's like, it's fun. There's a lot of people from Florida that live in, live, live in this area. That is so interesting. Well, and how fun. Well, I want to check out your raw cakes because I think they're beautiful. Have you ever heard of a restaurant called Cafe Gratitude in Los Angeles? No, but I've been to I've been to Los Angeles and I will I will go there if you recommend it this time. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it I, it's, I've been out of LA five years, but they had the most they have a cookbook called Sweet Gratitude and they had just just beautiful, delicious raw desserts. Actually, on March 11th, I'm having the raw vegan pastry chef from a restaurant called Raw Fresno come on the show and make something. Oh, nice. I'll definitely watch that. I, you know what? Vegan and raw desserts are the best I've ever had. Like I actually made my first raw cake before I went vegan because I couldn't eat any baked goods. So I saw online, I'm like, oh, this is just cashews and beets and a little bit of, you know, so I quickly made it and I couldn't believe it didn't hurt my stomach. And it was so nutrient dense. Like I actually make a couple cakes with like a lot of adaptogens, sea moss and things like that work moms are always telling me they're like I literally feel like high after like I feel uplifted 
after eating your cakes. So that's my goal is to have people instead of feeling like really tired and like lethargic after eating dessert to feel high after having my dessert. So. Well, the thing that's neat about raw desserts is they're actually made from food. They may be a little bit more calorically dense, but, you know, sugar and flour and oil, which is what a traditional cake might be, usually they're made of actual foods you can eat, like nuts and seeds and avocados and, you know, dates and other fruits. So that's really cool. Yeah, and I even like reduce the amount of uh, nuts in my cakes. And I will talk more about that as well. Like I, I, I am developing something for my cakes and um what I do in, in the crust is like I reduce the amount of nuts by putting buckwheat, sprouted buckwheat, oh. and then I'll so I so it's like not as much nuts as like I used to do. And then I'll add things like zucchini or sea moss in the cake part to reduce the amount of cashews, and then it's like even lighter. So it's fun. It's like it's like a science experiment. And I was I took on um, Crystal Bonnet's course, she's one of my dear friends. I took her, so she's taught me everything. Like, she's amazing. She's a wizard. Nice. Uh, Yin says, I've been to Cafe Gratitude a few times. Delicious raw food. We celebrated Valentine's Day there one year, the, Ber uh, the Berkeley restaurant before they closed. I think there's still one in LA. Uh, Struthi says, do you have rules about raw food? Like, not too many. Maybe not too many rules, maybe? I'm not really raw, so I don't have rules. I personally, I really eat intuitively. Like, um, if there's a big ramen, you know, if I feel like ramen, I will eat it. Like I'm not fully raw, but my goal is to always like for the raw rules, I would say is to like, what I try to do is, is to opt for as many fresh foods throughout the day, like eat some, eat like a bunch of mangoes or like a smoothie and just like try to get in as many fresh foods first. And then at the end of the day, I try to do like a big meal. So but like I said, for raw rules, I think that the rules is that it can't be cooked um, under 110 degrees. So like on your Excalibur dehydrator, I always like dehydrate things to about 105. So it doesn't actually cook it. So then the, the nutrients stay intact. So that's like the, probably the only rule, right? Do you, do you do a lot of juicing or mostly you're more of a smoothie kind of person? I used to do a lot of juicing back in Canada. But, okay, this is really funny, though. I was juicing in Canada. I wanted to open a juice bar really bad. We decided, should we go and travel the world or should we open a juice bar? We decided to travel the world, and then COVID happened. I sold my juicer, but I was just actually hired to do a collaboration with one of my good friends, Mel, because she wanted me to create a book on what to do with juicing pulp. So I just got a Nama juicer and started juicing again. And it was, it was, I just, I was like, how come I, like I stopped this? Juicing is absolutely amazing. I missed it. So I am back on juicing a little bit. So. Nice. Well, thanks. It's very nice to meet you. You as well. You are so sweet. I love your story. You're a huge inspiration. Thank you so much. And thank you for being in the bundle. And thanks all of you for getting the bundle. If you want to get it from Kelly, her unique link is below. And if you want to come back in about 25 minutes for our fifth and final show of the day, Rose Lapiano from Plant Mom, Plant, I can't, I'm so tired. The Plant Life Chose Us. She's going to be making a vegan egg McMuffin. Take care.